Hi everybody, I'm Liz and I decided that I'm going to make a video showing you what it's like to mix Remodulin IV medication for pulmonary hypertension. Um, I was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension in 2008 I've, um, and, uh, and I've gone through a lot of medications and currently right now I am on Remodulin IV uh, medication so just wanted to kind of show you uh, the process because I know when I was first diagnosed or first told that I would be on this medication and have a, a central line on my chest um, I kind of wanted to know what that was going to be like and what it was going to entail so I hope this video is informative for you so first off um, is to have a, a set place where you're going to mix your medication. Um, so here is the table that I use and I just cleaned it with Clorox. Um, we want to make sure that it's a clean area, no dust. Also, before you start mixing, you want to make sure you wash your hands. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and gather the supplies that I use to mix the medication. I have an area in this room that I actually call my med room um, and you can see I've converted the closet. Uh, I bought big containers and that's where I have all of my supplies. Um, extra supplies are up on the top but everything is organized there and I'll show you each drawer um, after I'm done. So right now I'm just going to gather my supplies. There's a lot of things and I'll show you each, each item that is used. organize uh, instead of just keeping boxes which can attract spiders or bugs I let I actually went out and bought these containers and they make everything so much easier there's little ones with alcohol um, hand sanitizer I already have cut hypofix uh, two by two gauze. I have a specific scissor that if I ever need scissors or to cut anything, I only use this with these items and I always wipe it with alcohol. So these are all the supplies that I need. You need a cup, a mug, that's going to hold your cassette. Uh, I use a Flowland diluent with the medication, you have to get your doctor to um, prescribe this for you. Otherwise, they will send you sterile water to mix with your medication. You, I have a few 60 cc syringes, and I have a few 10 cc syringes. You need a butter knife, and I'll show you why later. You also need your medication and the Q-Sight adapter that you're going to spike the vial with. You need you need your cassettes for each medication, and I have these mini spikes that I will use on the Flowland diluent vials. And I'll show you how I use that. I also keep a folder with obviously a pen, 
um, copy of my doctor's dosing sheet. This comes from my specialty pharmacy. Tells me how much remodulin I'm gonna mix, the rate, the pump rate, um, and how much diluent to put in each cassette. And then also I have the labels for the cassettes. After you mix it, you wanna label it and it has your name um, and all the pertinent information like the amount of remodulin that was used and the diluent pump rate, etc. I'm gonna bring you closer. So you can see. Okay, first thing, I have these trays that I got from Remodulin, and I really like them. Um, they're good for traveling too when you have to take extra supplies, um, if you have to mix or whatever. It just kind of gives you a clean base. And so first thing we're going to do is clean it with alcohol. And you go in a circle from the inside out. Like I said, you want to make sure that everything is nice and clean. And I do it twice. You're going to be using a lot of alcohol pads. And I keep a trash can right next to me. I'm right-handed, so to my right side. It just makes everything a lot easier and quicker. Okay. Now I'm going to place the Flowland Diluent vials. You want to make sure that they have not expired. So as I'm taking them out, I always, um, that's when I check the date. 2019. So that's good. I already had a remodulin open from before. Anytime you open a vial, you want to make sure you write the date on it. And also I'm checking the expiration date. Expires 2018. And I always keep it in a Ziploc just to keep it clean, no dust on it, but we're still going to clean that. And here's the next item is your, your cassette. And this is, this cassette is used on the CAD Legacy 1 pump, which I can show you. This is the CAD Legacy 1, and this is the cassette that we're going to mix, and that pops in there. Okay, so this is what the mug is for um, to keep the bubbles going up right here because when we're all done mixing, we have to make sure there aren't any bubbles left in this cassette. So that's what the mug is for. Take out some alcohol pads. And what else am I going to use? I'm going to use two of these mini spike pins, and these are for the Flowland Diluent, one for each. I'm going to use a 10cc syringe. So when I open this, I'm going to keep it clean like that. Also, a 60 cc syringe. And now we're going to first clean the vials. The Flowland Diluent.
And I just can't um, say my ABCs once. A, B, C, D, F, G, G, G. A, B, C, D, F, G, G. And then I'm going to leave this one on top of there. And I'm going to get another alcohol pad to wipe clean the previously used remodulin vial. Okay, that's clean. And we're going to prime the syringe. It's a little bit hard. Three times. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to spike the vial. And you're going to take a look at your dosing sheet to know how much of the diluent to use. So I'm going to use 42 cc's. So I'm going to draw up. Actually, with this spike strip, you don't need to push air into it. If you were using a needle, then you would need to draw up 40 or put the amount of air in first and then. But with this spike strip, I don't have to put air in. So I'm going to draw up 42 cc's now there's a lot of bubbles on this so that's what where the butter knife comes in you want to get all the bubbles at the top so you can get them out of the syringe So now, if you can see up here, that's where the bubbles are. So I'm going to push them out. And now I have 42 cc's of lowland diluent. So now I can take this off, and I'm going to go ahead and put it into the... Cassette. And it's filling up in here. You can see the water. Before I take the syringe off, I want to clamp this. Okay, and you want to, the way you want to fill the cassette is in the sandwich method, um, diluent, medication, diluent. So now I'm going to draw up 8 cc's, let's prime this, 1, 2, 3, of the remodulin. Oh, forgot to put the air in. Let's go down to eight. Can we push the air in? And then that makes it easier. Pretty much fills itself. Eight cc's. It's just tiny little bubbles. Okay, we've got our eight cc's. Now I can let go of this one, put it back in my clean spot. Now I can unclamp this. 
and push the 8 cc's of medication. Now I'm going to clamp it and I'm going to leave the syringe on there just to keep the tip of the tube clean. Now we're going to get our other vial. It's clean. Get our new spike. It has a cover on here that comes off. This is this is trash. Oh no. Well, that's not sterile anymore. So this is going to get thrown out. Here's a new one. You always want to make sure everything is sterile. Everything that touches the inside. You do not want to get any contamination in your line. Push that in there. Take off the cap. Now when I throw these vials, this one's the one we already used. I just capped it again and then I'm reusing this box just to save space and then tossing it in the trash like that. Okay, now I'm going to draw 50 cc's of the other vial. So 50 cc's here and 42 cc's on the first one. That's 92 cc's plus the 8 cc's of medication. That's 100 cc's or 100 mLs that fit in this cassette. And this cassette will last 48 hours. So now I'm going to draw up the 50 cc's or cc's is the same thing as mLs. Okay, get the, all the bubbles out. All right, that's 50 cc's. Fifty. So now I'm going to take off the 10 cc and load. Next, unclamp and start pushing it into this cassette. It's a little hard. Now I'm going to clamp it before I let this go. Now the, this is trash. I'm going to cover this again just because it's going in the trash. This is trash. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for bubbles on my cassette. First, let's try to mix everything together. You don't want to shake it because then it'll create more bubbles. So you want to be gentle. Just collecting all the bubbles from the cassette. Sometimes there's folds at the bottom and bubbles will collect there. And here's a butter knife again. When you hit it, the bubbles automatically go up. sure we get all the bubbles out or as many as you can okay. 
Okay, that looks good. Now the cassette, you see this too? It, go, it enters in at this corner. You can kind of see the baggie inside and that's so that's why I'm keep that's what the focus of the mug is to get all the bubbles to go up here and out of the tube so now what we're gonna do unclamp this and draw up all the air you see the air coming out we're gonna let it come out slowly there's some medication coming out in here so we'll push that medication back in we only want to take out all the air. So if you keep your syringe upright, that way the bubbles and the air will come out first before medication. Okay, so now we want to fill up the tube and then you clamp it. So this whole tube right now is filled with medication and there isn't any air left in the cassette. This was all the air and all the accumulated bubbles that was in here. We drew it up. So now before I unclamp this, I'm gonna get my cover or my open and ready. And again, I do not, I wanna keep it sterile. So I do not wanna touch the tip. So now I'm gonna this is clamped, so I can take this off, and the big syringe goes in the trash, and now I can cover this. So I never touched the inside of the red cap. And this clamp is gonna stay clamped like that. And now you've got a perfectly mixed cassette. We wanna put a label on it, so here's my labels, and on the label, you're going to fill out uh, the date that it was mixed, the time that it was mixed, when it expires. When you're using Flowland Diluent, this cassette is good, mixed, is good for two weeks. Or 14 days. If you use, if you do not use Flowland diluent, but you use sterile saline or sterile water, it is not good for two weeks. This cassette would expire if it's mixed, would expire uh, less. I don't remember how many days. Um, so if you want to have flow and diluent so that you can, what I usually do is sit down and mix seven of these so then I don't have to mix anything for two weeks. I'm good for two weeks. You have to ask your doctor to put in the order and call with your specialty pharmacy and then they will send you the flow and diluent. So this, what time is it? 14.39. And so this cassette is ready to go. I have a special place that I keep these so that they remain nice and neat, um, like in these, like these big containers. And that's how you mix um, rem IV remodulin medication with Flowland diluent for your CAD Legacy pump. And now I can show you how I organize my supplies. Um, recently I was in the hospital and I was pretty sick. And so I was out of it. I was out for 13 days. And so it made things a lot easier for my caregiver, which is my husband, um, because everything was in a place. So he was able to look and find already mixed cassettes, dates on them. And when he had to start mixing himself, he was able to look in all of my supplies in the closet back there um, and find everything that he needed. Because I wasn't there to tell him or show him 
oh, you need this or you need that or this is where I keep it. So it's a really good idea to let your caregiver know where you keep all your supplies and what is needed as well. So I'm going to show you now uh, my supplies. So this is the closet. So the, um, like I said, I, I have these cool containers. One thing that I always have is supplies with me. I have like an hour away or two hours away. I always have this supplies with me in the car um, with me, an extra cassette. And, and and I always have extra batteries on hand. I have an extra clamp. Um, Band-Aids, IV3000, extra tape, definitely alcohol pads, hand sanitizer, I have extra tubing, and gloves. Because if you need to change your your uh, dressing, you want to wear gloves to take off the dirty stuff. And I also have two drapes. I try to keep two of everything. So two uh, extension sets or tubing. I also keep two of these little adapters. These are the ones that go on the end of the tubing and that connect onto your line. I have a pen. And so I keep all of this with me just in case. I mean, it's happened to me before where I've been stuck in traffic and all of a sudden I need to change my, my cassette and it starts beeping so I can get out of the freeway and I can even do this in the car with my hand sanitizer, gloves, and everything. And so I have these Ziplocs because I will carry two extra cassettes in here and I like to put them in Ziplocs because um, for some of you that live in very hot area, you don't want to leave the mixed cassettes in your car where it can go up in the 100 degrees. So I always carry an, a little, a little uh, ice box or a chest and then I'll put the cassettes in the Ziplocs and then I'll put it in there. That way I don't have to worry that my medication is going to get ruined um, from heat. So that's that. Uh, I also have, I was given from the Remodulant Place this journal, which is really good. So I just started using it. I take my vitals every day. So in here I keep... Uh, made like a little list of the date, time, blood pressure, pulse, oxygen, weight, temperature. Uh, you always want to make sure you're checking your temperature um, to make sure you're not, because temperature is the first sign of infection. So I have that. Also, there is a current list of all the medications that I'm on. And then it says, it actually says when I started the particular medication and when I, it ended or if it's still ongoing. There's a number to my specialty pharmacy. And then it has appointments where you can fill out the calendar, um, questions that you want to ask your doctor so you don't forget. There's also, it's a good idea to document 
uh, you can get a calendar and just document every day how you're feeling. If you were having any dizziness, fatigue, shortness of breath, chest pain, diarrhea, um, vomiting, nausea. Um, so it's good to document that. If for whatever reason you have to go on transplant list, they like to see this, uh, that you're organized and that you're going to be taking your medications on, ta on a timely manner. You're not going to skip doses, that you're going to work with them for your, the benefit of your health. There's also a note section where I like to just kind of write some, um, the results of my six minute walk tests, things like that. So it's good. It's, this is kind of a good little uh, notebook to have with you when you go to all of your doctor's appointments. I also have a Ziploc with, and I labeled it, supplies for nurse dressing kit. So if you have a nurse come over to your house uh, in the beginning of when you first get put on an IV medication, it's good to have that just in case you're unavailable, you're too tired to get things together. And then your caregiver can just say, here, she left this for you. And all of the supplies she needs are there. And then if he needs to get things ready, I labeled what is needed. A drape, a drape kit, bio patch, mask, medium gloves. Um, if, you have, if you have to flush, there's a syringe with the saline. There's a drape. There's everything that she would need. So nobody has to go fumbling around. We also have, I have all the glove sizes. My husband uses uh, extra large. I use small. Usually nurses use medium. So here's the top drawer of all the supplies. Let's see. So I have the tubing. Tubing there, 10 cc syringes. Uh, extra batteries that they send me, the connectors, bio patch tape, extra um, two by two guys, extra bio patches. I have masks here, uh, Q sites for the remodulin syringes. Here's remodulin. There's drapes here. There's um, alcohol swab sticks. Second drawer, all the extra um, Flowland diluent. I have this tray with more batteries and different sizes of band-aids. And underneath that I have all the cassettes. I have sterile gloves as well because when I change my dressing on my chest, um, I use sterile gloves and you can get that from your specialty pharmacy. There's uh, alcohol pad boxes. Those are just extras. And then the spike strips. And then last drawer. I usually try to keep at the bottom drawer so I don't have to be bending over. Just the residue supplies. Just extra things. Extra drapes. Extra sizes. Extra hyperfix. Um, gauze pads, dressing change kits, and then in this other one, I have 60 cc syringes, flush syringes with saline, and and that's it for all of my supplies. And there's my area where I do all of my mixing. When it's at night, um, you need light and so you have the lamp right there so that you can see everything properly. Um, I also like that in this room I use the mirror for when I'm changing dressing. I can see myself in the mirror and change everything properly. If you don't have this, you can just buy a makeup, a, a standalone makeup mirror and that would help um, but yeah there's the table that we have with all of the supplies so I hope that this video is helpful um, for you and I just want to say that 
pH doesn't have to be a death sentence. You can live life and move on um, and everything can you can just make the best of everything. So I hope that uh, you do well with your remodulin and I hope that you do well with your pulmonary hypertension. I have to say I'm very grateful for my caregivers, my husband and my and my kids who help me out every day. Um, so I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.